call to order the Board of Liquor Control for public comment. This is on, on items for the Liquor Control Board, not the Select Board. No samples. <laughs> Seeing none, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Approval of the minutes? Um, I'm sorry, we added one more permit. Um, okay. It's not on the agenda. That should have, I should have mentioned that under approval of agenda. I forgot it. Uh, it's in your packet, but it's just not on the agenda. It's not on the list? Yeah. It's a lucky, lucky bugger. bugger. Yeah. to add Lucky Bugger to the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now approval of the minutes from February 13th. We move we approve the minutes from February 13th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> New business. We have a list of Randolph Village Pizza, Champlain Farms, Dollar General, Floyd's, Randolph Smart Shop, Sodexo, and Lucky Bugger for Sodexo is a repeat from, it's a different application because now the state is requiring all applicants to have multiple applications for class, um, uh, first, second, and third class licenses. So I share that because the, the board has uh, seen a SEDEX application before. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Well, where's the location of that? Just out That's here. the BTC campus. That's what yeah, I thought. BTC, okay. yeah. yeah. I just think of that as an yeah, institutional. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love their email address, Liquor License USA. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's what happens when you're that big. <laughs> oh, I see that sign. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'll make a motion to approve all the liquor licenses for those listed. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Other business? Motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Moving on to the regular select board meeting. First is public comment. This is comment on anything that's not on our agenda. Yep. I'm Michael Cameron. I would just like to publicly thank Mr. Sackowitz, Sackowitz for his announcements on Front Porch Forum. I think it's very helpful. Thank you. Yes. We did notice that. Good job. I'll keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> Good. The compliments or the announcements? The announcements. <laughs> <laughs> that part of your show? Yeah, keep the compliments. Yeah, sure. Those are yeah, those going hard. Is that, what's the, is that part of your secretary duties? Is that what you're bucking for here? Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just It's not the attention, no. No, no, it's no. good stuff. Uh, I think that was great, so. Yeah. <laughs> Approval of the agenda. Any changes to Delco? No, no changes. No. Okay, motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent calendar. We have uh, minutes <coughs> and warrants. that we approve the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 New business. First up is select board. Mission of officers. Start with. I think the positions, I just wanted to remind everyone, it's uh, chair, vice chair, and secretary. I don't recall there being a fourth position, just those three. 
Okay, so I'll make a motion that um, retain Trini as chair. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I would, I would make a motion that Larry Sackwoods be the vice chair. Okay with that? Second. One second. Am I okay with that? Sure. Okay. Was that a we second? A second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we wait for other nominations. Don't need any. We're good. This turn. <laughs> I'm happy to sit back for a while. <laughs> Such an important decision. I need to run the meeting. She's not here. So how many times did she always here? Yeah, not always. <clears throat> Once in a while. When I have no boys. Uh, secretary. Well, I can't be secretary. You can't be secretary. No, you just lost your job. Nominate Perry. Perry. Swap seat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect me to be punching anything up on front porch forum, though. Okay. So I'm still I'll gonna be your role. I'll keep that job. It's a volunteer okay. position anyway. But you get compliments too. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's not really volunteer. You get paid in compliments. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So what was that for? Secretary. 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 Larry. Perry. Oh, Perry. Perry. So we did the motion and a second. Oh, All right, I will uh, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Pat seconded it. Oh, Pat. Okay. Thanks. All right. Onward and upward. Uh, downtown designation program briefing. Uh, Julie's here uh, to briefly talk about some of the work that um, RACDC and the town have uh, worked on together the last year. Um, we ask that um, you know, should come and tell us some of the good work that, that we pulled together to share it with the select board and potentially also to speak about some of the other uh, <coughs> still very loose but general plans uh, that we've discussed about uh, outbuilding in the village. Villages. Villages. Villages, yeah, villages. Right. <laughs> um, well, I don't, I mean, I, I, I sent in a letter, I don't know if you've read it, but I could just quickly run through some of the things that have happened over the past year. Uh, I'd love to solicit some ideas for going forward, have some ideas of our own for going forward, um, and ways to, you know, I think Dalton and I have talked about a few other things that may be in the works, but um, everything is, is a work in progress. <laughs> so. Uh, over the past years, in terms of events and competitions, we uh, completed a co-working space competition where we were able to award uh, a year-long lease to one um, business that uh, received the award. As a result, I attached a letter that that business sent to us about the, the result of that and how they were able to both improve their, um, improve their own business standing but also be involved more in statewide and other resources and help others in the community as a result. So it seems like a good outcome. That was the result of our donor being able to, being willing to give us a gift in order that we could hold that competition and at the same time sort of advertise the fact that we have a co-working space in town and that there were positions available in it. So that worked out well. We also had um, uh, success in obtaining um, a National Life Main Street grant which we uh, co-wrote with Rasta, and that supported the Rasta Hub events, the, <coughs> the downtown block party, and the um, Illuminated Forest Festival. So some of that, that cost was covered by the downtown grant last year. This year, we're going to be looking more to sponsorships and hope that people appreciating the success of those expanded downtown event opportunities will support us in the coming year. Um, we also um, worked with uh, the uh, Illumination Collective, which did the digital coding for the Illumination Forest Festival, and LED Dynamics have expressed an interest in working to make that a a bigger, better event this year, and to maybe even expand it into other things that they're unable to do elsewhere where they have to set up and break down in the same day. It's, they spent 
eight hours setting up for basically a three or four hour uh, festival and that's the sort of typical for them so we're talking with them about other ways to maybe make this a little more permanent or, or some kind of permanent or semi-permanent or longer term um, display that would also maybe attract people on a more regular basis to the downtown to see it. I think it turned out, we get a lot of nice comments about how different that was in terms of other events that we've had. Uh, we've now secured, I think, um, all or almost all of the permissions we need and equipment we need for the downtown Wi-Fi, public, free public Wi-Fi project. Um, Nathan had a little uh, health issue, so he was unable to do much walking or climbing, but he's starting to climb back on roofs, and uh, we're starting to get that stuff installed and answer the necessary questions and figure out the proper placement. So um, that's underway, and um, we hope to have that up and running at least before the downtown block party, which is scheduled for May 30th, uh, if not sooner. Um, work with R3 uh, on some of the other issues that are overlapping with the downtown and business development group. Uh, we've awarded uh, loans through the Business Development Loan Fund to two downtown groups, Moshio Recreation Inc. and Huggable Mug Cafe. Uh, and so that's, those businesses were able to get going as a result of those loans. Um, we further improved the downtown, the floodplain forest pocket park, that little pocket park and some putting up some signage, additional signage down there near the floodplain forest. Um, just a, um, got our new VISTA coming this Monday. That VISTA will be working largely on downtown events um, and other downtown issues. And we've already started working on the downtown block party. Uh, and as we communicate with the town and watch the coronavirus issue uh, alerts and guidelines, uh, so obviously safety first, uh, hoping that as an outdoor downtown events, that maybe um, that is still able to happen, but with the appropriate precautions. Um, and then of course the downtown transportation grant that we got last year with the town will be uh, underway this year on the Merchant Street, Pleasant Street area. And then we're talking about the next opportunities for the Prince Street area. Uh, and then some other project incidental projects. Um, so if there are uh, other ideas, uh, please send them our way. I would love to see us be able to link some of these downtown events to biz business promotions. Historically, we have not been that great at working together within the downtown business community uh, to sort of co-promote the downtown, there are a lot of ways other downtown organizations uh, <coughs> work with the uh, business community to do that, and I'd love to explore more of that this year because it can be really powerful in a cheaper way than each business at a time doing promotion and, and ideas to do it collectively. It's obviously more work and requires a lot of buy-in, but I think as a direction, you know, now that we have more events, there's more to, sort of more bragging rights about coming to downtown maybe that we um, if we do the joint promotion, we can take better advantage of it. Um, that happens in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places. Anything from Poem City, which started the Poem Town thing, which just gets people to come and look around. That's a, yeah, it's a great sort of way to do that, and we continue to sponsor that um, with the folks, uh, the volunteers who do that. We're the fiduciary for that program. But there's also, um, you know, some downtowns will do packaged, um, rates for advertising and promotion or do joint public joint ads in larger publications that individual community you know individual businesses can't afford. So the more we can get people to sort of think about either collective uh, promotion or collective events like sidewalk sales and things like that, uh, with our events to sort of take advantage of the fact that we'll have more people in town, I think the better off we'll be. Um, but you have to sort of uh, measure that against our available resources and see what works the best. So ideas along that line, or you know, if you're talking to business people and they're thinking of other things, or 
or seem to be interested in that, please let us know and we'll be doing the same. Any questions? Yeah. Well, I realized, I don't know if you got this when you got this too, but I realized that somehow our scanner like didn't like the third bottom yeah. third of the letter, but uh, yes. So that turned out with Adolfo. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not in your packets. It was a letter requesting the the second half, so it was a more of an invoice as opposed to. Oh, okay. But it was yeah, it's like we usually do a, a report that's with the invoice, and I, I, mean, I usually send it to both Adolfo and the select board. And my other question was, when does redesignation happen? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I know it, it often comes faster than we think. I think it's 2021. And then, uh, so there is one business that we're working with in East Randolph that may be able to take advantage of the um, tax credits if the village designation is approved in time. And so I'm getting Caitlin Corkins from the department to come up and visit just in case we can make that timing happen. I'm happy to help those folks if they have questions about the tax credit applications. We usually help people fill out the, the sort of um, narrative part that's, you know, uh, it's about the historical nature of the property and the community benefit of the property and the sort of uh, the part of the application that sort of we know what they're asking for <laughs> and it may be harder for a business owner to know. So we usually help people by, um, by filling that out for them if they'd like. Yep. And the East Randolph designation is underway too, right? To get that back. As I understand it, yeah. Um, Josh said it's sort of ready to go, except for a few things that the um, members of the East Randolph community w were helping out with. I talked to them. I think they're underway, and they're looking at April or May as an application or approval date. The uh, tax credit application is due in July, so. It's a little close, mm -hmm. but it's doable. If they can get that scheduled. I remember that group. <laughs> well, I know there was some frustration with the boundaries right? and where they wanted to draw some of the boundaries, and it involved ag land. And yeah, that the it got a little messy. Yeah, but. They have been in touch, I don't know, have they been in touch with the program about it? Because they're pretty strict about that stuff. I mean, they won't, um, it's safer to stay with the original boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the challenge is there's no land available. There's no development, right? It's all houses and, because <coughs> mm -hmm. the, the village designation is the village. Is the village, mm -hmm. yeah. And so there's no, no expansion no area. expansion area. Yeah. But I think, you know, to get redevelopment potential and then to do a closer study and add boundary if necessary um, would maybe be easier when you have developed your argument and have done a little deeper dive into what is appropriate for that and maybe had conversations by getting the, just, just you know, the up to them. But it seems like it's easier to just go with the existing, get it done, then do some more study and come back with an, uh, an argument. But the reason to expand it. I think that's what they're doing. Okay, well, I hate to see them miss out on an opportunity here, so. Mm -hmm. I think Josh has it. Yeah, he does. Okay. Any more questions on that? Can you pick a date for your block party? Uh, it's supposed to be May 30th. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Materials from the Lister's office. <clears throat> Materials from the Lister's office. So there's a few documents that the Lister's office sent over that the select board needs to sign. So I just wanted to talk about each of them briefly so you know what they are that you're signing. Okay. Um, the first are some, there's five separate certificate of no appeals um, or suit pending. And the way the Lister's office works is each summer we establish the grand list based on ownership and parcels developed as of April 1st. 
Thirty some of the grand list is set, and then at the end of the year, um, we do a form saying that there are no errors or omissions to that. If we find any corrections that need to be done, we do that. This year we had one or two corrections we sent over, and you guys approved that. I think in December, maybe January first. Mm -hmm. And then the next statute says that any any time after the first Tuesday uh, in February for each year. You need to certify that there's no appeals pending on your grand lists. So that hasn't been done for the years 2015 through 2019 because we had appeals. So in 2015, there was an appeal from Gifford Medical Center um, in regards to Morgan Orchards, and that was heard by the DCA and then eventually went to court in 2016. It was settled in 2017. So there was no certificate of no appeal in 2015. 2016, there wasn't one because Gifford was still going on and we still had the same grand list value. In 2017, we had an appeal from uh, Dina Crowas on their property on Hibbert Hill. And that was settled in 2018. So 2017, they were signed off on. In 2018, there was an appeal from the Forbes. <coughs> and that one went to the DCA and was resolved that year. And then this 2019, we had no appeals. So um, everything now is good. We have no appeals or suits from any of the previous five years. So now the um, listers and the select board can sign these certificates of no um, suits pending or appeals. Then they get recorded with Joyce, and she files them in the back of the grand list that she maintains upstairs for each of those five years. So that's there for you to sign. Uh, one of the tricky parts is that they ask for the majority of the listers to sign it, and right now I'm it. Um, <laughs> coming up soon on the next agenda item, you're going to be asked to appoint a lister, so um, we'll have two to be able to sign this probably as of tomorrow. Um, so that's the first document that you have to sign. There's also two contracts in your packet with a company called CAI Technologies. Um, CAI uh, maintains our tax maps for us. Um, the contract is for at least $3,100. And they've been doing it for several years. Pat probably knows better than I how long, because he's got one for a long time. Uh, but they maintain our tax maps. They make any changes. We send them deeds if there's you know, parts of their subdivisions. We send them subdivision maps. And they make sure all of our boundaries are kept straight. They provide us with um, a two sets of tax maps a year, plus they give us an index a couple different indexes where you can find ownership on the tax maps. So that's the first contract, it's done annually. The second contract is a newer contract, but it's in place now. Um, we've had it for a couple of years. It's the same company, and it's for GIS uh, internet services. So we have a database that they maintain for us with all of our parcels on it. Several different departments in town use it. Listers use it, I think water, sewer, maybe the highway. I know Josh uses it. So uh, Marty uses it all the time. It's a great way to create a butter list um, for eating and stuff like that. So that's up for renewal um, this year as well. It's an annual, and that's $2,400. Um, the one change to that is that site had been um, just for our use as town officials or town employees until February 1st. And portions of it have been made public. So now assessor, um, appraisers, and real estate agents, or any resident can just log on, click on a thing to sign a, a disclosure, and then they can view boundary lines and parcel maps and print them and stuff like that. It can't get anything that we've restricted. Um, we met and talked about this with um, town staff. They can't see like our water lines or sewer lines. They can see parcels. Not to be changed this year, which really actually alleviated a lot of pressure once through office because that was how a lot of folks in there looking for property records they can get online now. Dennis, is there a way that we can sort of make that um, sort of information available to the public so people just so, in general yeah. know that this is now something that they can do on their own? Absolutely. I created a five page PDF with um, snapshots, of, you know, screen captures little arrow showing exactly how to log in and, and then how to get to where you want to be and how to print. So that PDF is available upstairs. I have some printed out. I also put it online. It's on the town's webpage under the listers department. Okay. 
um, and also emailed um, every real estate agent and appraiser that I had contact information for. Um, and they said, hey, this is them. And they all replied, we love it. <laughs> so they're doing a lot of it back now. It's out there, it's on the website. Okay. And you could certainly put that on front porch form. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll come to the next meeting. <laughs> 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 if they don't want that, they can go to Hunt Talks and you can look it all right up on your app on your phone. I don't want to look for it. Right? Um, and so those are the, the contract pieces that you're going to be asked to sign. The, the contracts come to the listers, but they're contracts to the town, so you'll have to sign them. Um, I think the um, certificates of no appeal, um, I'll have to sign later. And then the only other update really is uh, referring to this, an appointment later on. Uh, Amy Burstein has written a letter to the board asking to be appointed as a lister. And Mimi was a lister in Bethel for three years, or six years, I think before she moved to Randolph, and she was a lister here for three years. She knows the systems really well. And she thinks she can only do three or four hours a week, but it certainly would be um, good help since you have a lot of parcels to go out and look at and try to get onto the grand list for April 1. So that would be helpful. Um, the other things on our, really, that are happening in the office is we're going to be um, looking, searching for a full-time assessor again. That went into the budget this year. So we're going to look for a full-time assessor and then just have three part-time you know, uh, listers. Um, and also, we're starting thinking about a town-wide reappraisal. Um, our common level appraisal right now is really good. It's like 103%. Um, so we're not being forced to do it by the state, but we haven't done one since 2006. And we're really noticing that a lot of our commercial stuff is off more than our residential. So maybe we can start with that. Um, I've had discussions with Josh about this a lot because our commercial stuff is kind of all over the board right now. Um, and there's new commercial stuff coming on. On Freedom Foods, there's the new buildings and the Mother Rec thing, and there's some commercial expansion, so um, I think we need to focus on that. Town wide reappraisal, I've talked to a couple of companies, they're out, you know, looking out two or three years. So this is just something we want to start setting up and getting an RFP ready for and trying to find who's going to do it. Um, question? How'd you talk Mimi into that? Um, Pat talked Mimi into it, I think. Because we're trying to figure out who um, has some who skills. Could just come in and, and help. You know, most of them are scared away by the, um, some of the software stuff that mm -hmm. she lit. And so Pat, you should talk to Mimi. She has a couple of jobs. Yeah. Um, but she's really well, interested. That's, in that's, that's so. great. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we need a motion to accept the map maintenance proposal. This is the 3100 annual agreement. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion to approve $2,400 contract for JIS internet services. I make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion to accept and sign the certificates of no appeal or suit pendings for the grand list. I'll move that we sign the, was it five years? Anyway? 2015 to 2019. Yeah, five years of no suit from 2015 through 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good job. Good. Appointment. First one up is the lister's position. <laughs> We've got big shoes to fill. Uh, Dennis is an excellent baker. <laughs> Just want to point that out. And, uh, I'm a thing he baked, but that is <laughs> cookies and cakes. And wow. We need yeah. wait staff, so that'll work well. We need a team, right? <laughs> Any objections to Mimi being appointed as a lister? I'll no. move that we appoint her to the three year position. I will second that. Is she interested in three years? Did she say? I'm, I got thinking about this earlier. If you can appoint only until the next town meeting, is that 
right? No, it's for the term. You can appoint yeah, the term. Yeah, for the full term. I thought you can only appoint the relevant term. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had a motion and a second mm -hmm. for a lister. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You have, to, you have a partner. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. And you have a majority. You have a quorum. Now have a quorum. Yeah. Majority. I've always had a quorum. <laughs> 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 That's convenient. Wasn't much arguing. Yes. I don't think they're going to be in trouble that this is the next one. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. You don't have to talk to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, every year we have our appointments list, which everybody has. The easiest thing usually is to start at the top and work our way down to it. I'd like to make a, uh, a suggestion to the board. I don't see it in here, but we had uh, Mr. Soloway <coughs> submit a request to be appointed to the budget committee because we now have a vacancy. We have we have him here. Um, I'm not sure if the board wanted to hear from him later or vacancies here now. Is, is that a vacancy that has come up since town meeting? Since town meeting, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, I did see. Glutton for punishment? It's a one-year one term. <laughs> one year it's a one-year term. <laughs> right. And you're okay for a year. Good for a year. Who, who is see if you want to sign up again. <laughs> Who's the vacancy now? Oh, uh, Dick uh, Pay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Sullivan? Not I. Mm -hmm. you know? Sure, I'll make a motion to appoint David Silloway to the term of Budget Committee for one year. And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Kudos. All right. <laughs> that was easy. Full budget. <laughs> right, that expanded, was even. Expanded, people, yeah. yeah. That's very great. Very exciting. Very good. Very good. All right. And back on to our yearly appointments. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot to add the select board liaisons on this, so I, I, that's on there. I just highlighted ones that you use. What I don't know if members mm -hmm. might want to change that. So going through the first few, um, we have Milo for animal control officer. Any issues, concerns? Mm -hmm. Somebody else want that job? No. <laughs> She hasn't been too, too busy in the last six months, yeah. right? Mm. Things have calmed down. Heard, Things have calmed down. No, nothing that has made it to the town hall. She okay. may be receiving She may be there. receiving some, but she hasn't had to bring anything nothing to the board. Back, to, back to here. Well, when, I, when I was chair of the board, they didn't, we didn't have one, and it fell to the chair. So you just need to well, I something. checked that one off already. <laughs> no, it's already gone. <laughs> uh, delinquent uh, tax collector. This is looking at putting Cliff in that position. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good for that. EC Fiber Rep, Jeff Tolbert, Alt alternates or CJ Stump and Jerry Ward. Yep. These appointments will require a, uh, a signature form. form. That's right. Which I don't know if we included in your packets. No. I have it upstairs. Okay. Just we can maybe, if, if the board makes the appointments now before the end of the meeting, uh, during the manager's report, we can run up and grab the okay. factors. Okay. Uh, 911 coordinator Adolfo. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> other other duties as a son. Yes. <laughs> He's very good at getting new addresses, by the way. If anybody would like a new number. Okay. Emergency management director Wayne Warner. Coordinator Rich Doolin. We just appointed them not that long ago. Right. They haven't right. been there. Oh. I haven't really given them a chance to do much. Fire Warden Dan Boone, Health Officer uh, Melissa, and Deputy was Bob. We just did them in September. Right. Mm -hmm. Any concerns with any of those so far? Mm -hmm. okay. Library Director Amy. So the Library Director is appointed by the Select Board. I think the, the, the way it works is maybe mistaken, but I believe it's the library trustees hire 
the library director, but the position is still appointed. Similar to the, um, there's another position, uh, the zoning administrator. The PC actually hires a zoning administrator, but the select board appoints the person to the position. It doesn't really make sense, but that's a step that has to happen. Okay, I didn't know that. That's but both those positions are town employee, municipal employees? They are not. No, they're not. No. Okay. Huh. Uh, the state allows the library as a matter of convenience, the way that the, the state statute lists it, to use the town's HR and payroll right. system and the whole thing. But the law also states that we are not to interpret library employees as municipal employees because they are, as a matter of state convenience, is allowed by the state using our payroll, our processes. So we're basically like the fiduciary. That's exactly. Okay. They get the same benefits, right? Uh, they have their own personnel policy, so they could have their own benefits. Um, they typically mimic our policy. So if, if when the town made changes to the personnel policy, we shared it with them, and then they made changes to theirs so that it, it would mimic as closely as possible. But they could make changes that change their health plan um, or anything else. Yeah. They're in the state retirement system, I believe so. Yeah. so. Okay. Uh, let's hear from Mimi. Local Emergency Planning Committee Rep, Mike Hildebrand. Alternate Matt Fordham. You had that highlighted in yellow? Was yeah, I highlighted that. I I didn't hear from him whether or not oh. he wanted to continue, so. He doesn't get a choice. Yeah. I think I should have, like, somebody else's. He didn't respond. I'm sorry. You're That's standing right, right there, yeah. right? Yeah. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't show up for the meeting, else. you get a point. He didn't get, he didn't get an option there. You don't show up, you get a point. That's right. Mountain Alliance Rep Adolfo. Pound Keeper Malika. <laughs> Solid Waste Junkyard Enforcement Milo. We do not have a stagecoach representative. I have a question regarding that and the other ones that are vacant. How do we um, go about making these vacancies publicly warned or known so that people are aware of their there? Yeah, we typically post Larry's that. Larry's going to post that on press port paper, forum. Press <laughs> forum, <laughs> forum website, yeah, Larry. But we, we try to advertise them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, Shannon does. On right? Yeah. 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 We won't take, we'll take that one. We'll take that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, kind. All right. Superintendent of Cemeteries, Randy Garner. Town Engineer. Is this still a position? Uh, we have not had one since Marty's retirement. Uh, have we needed one? No. Have not needed one yet. And if we do need something, we will seek outside sources. Yeah. Find one. So I'm fine with that. that so I have a question that I should have asked a few moments ago, but we have a pound keeper. Do we have a pound? Yeah, it's the yes. vet. It's the vet hospital on 66. Oh, ah, okay. You know, I know where to look for my dog in my disappearance. Private public partnership. <laughs> yeah. 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 They bill us uh, when they It's like if you get your car towed, you're going to find it's going to be in somebody's dooryard. I, I have a question about the town engineer position. What would be an example of where an engineer would, would weigh in? In Marty's former role, where would she play the engineer? For the uh, most part, it was, it was reserved to calculations, it was reserved to reviewing bids submitted by contractors, that their bids were, the calculations were accurate, that the, the bid material that we were sending out was accurate, uh, it was linear feet, right. uh, amount of area. So it's consistency with specs. Though. Exactly, yeah. Did we have an engineer before we had Marty, who was an engineer, hired on staff? I don't know. I don't recall. Or did she become I don't think so. Then Marty became that position. Because her position yeah, became a morph of all these things because of her specific skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long she held the position, but she was with us for like 23 years. So I don't know how many years she held the town engineer position or others. 
I think that was one of those skill, one of those positions that went to her and because she had the it skills, may have been just because skills. she was an engineer. Yeah, she was a zoning administrator. She did science. She did the engineer. Mm -hmm. She did the tree warden. Mm -hmm. Wow. We've had uh, private engineering firms ask us to contract with them annually to do the engineering, but you know, I don't. I, we haven't had a need. I mean, we could also ask one of the employees to say, well, serve as the town engineer pro bono as you know, like community service. So we just haven't had, they haven't done that yet. But I also don't think that they would. We have a couple of firemen that are engineers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like their rate better. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Adolfo, mm -hmm. Tree Warden Rob Runnels, Two Rivers Rep Ramsey Pep, Alternate Gary Durr, the Transportation Advisory Committee. Should that be Morgan? Um, it was typically Bill. He volunteered to do it. We haven't asked Morgan to see if he would want to do it. Um, um, but we could ask if you'd like to do it, or maybe someone else in the highway department. But we could ask more. Okay. That makes sense. That's a group that meets just on transportation issues in the region. Mm -hmm. White River Ambulance, Steve Webster. And we do not have an alternate. No. Nope. Zoning Administrator Josh mm -hmm. and Deputy Adolfo. Deputy Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an update to share with the board on that. We were successful, and uh, Josh was successful, and I'm helping him with uh, interviews, uh, first and second round interviews for a administrative person in the zoning department. Um, I believe there is a uh, finalist, I don't know if, uh, I don't recall if the offer has actually been made yet, uh, but there is a finalist and the hope is that this person uh, will eventually become the zoning administrator position, uh, the zoning administrator for board order then to appointment in the future and then Josh will become the deputy. But until then, the person would do the administrative work or perform the administrative work and then Josh and I would be here full time to answer all questions or to visit properties. My understanding is that person was offered. Was it already? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. We'll have someone soon. They were. Yeah, that's my understanding. Where is the intent that Josh is temporary? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that we don't overburden the, the salary positions, uh, excluding me. It was actually a very good dis discussion at town meeting about that. Yeah. Same subject. Mm -hmm. So I have um, advised that I've been chairing the committee as a community member for the last, since its formation um, last fall, and um, I would like to continue as the select board liaison to the committee, but I've stepped down as the, as a formal member and hopefully into an ex-official, ex-officio role. Um, and. Uh, simultaneously with my making that decision, Phyllis um, Forbes has stepped down from the alternate role she was functioning in, um, which brings the committee down to nine formal members. Phyllis was the tenth as the alternate. Um, and um, <coughs> Abby Tonks, uh, very outstanding potter and craftsperson in town, and the new owner of the Huggable Mud Cafe has expressed an interest in stepping up. Um, I confirmed that with her uh, yesterday and um, would like to all of the other committee members, uh, Karen Dillon from Chandler, 
uh, Vincent Freeman, Susanna Gravel, Dave Hurwitz, Sonny Holt, Andy Mueller, and Marjorie Ryerson and Chris Wilson have all agreed to be on for another year. So, so the recommendation of this committee is that we have a select board liaison because we don't have one now. Uh, no, we don't. Um, uh, it's not necessarily the recommendation of the committee. I just, in stepping down, my suggestion is that we consider that. There hasn't been, there was not a select board right. liaison appointed when the committee was formed by the select board last fall. So, uh, and the three, the three community members that came forward initially in conversations with Adolfo to suggest the setting up of this committee were Sonny, myself, uh, and Susanna. Uh, so there currently is not a select board liaison. Seems reasonable to have one. I would like to have one, I think, because I think his input there is valuable yeah, to the projects that I know that they're working on. So, yeah. Yeah. just like the other committees that we have liaisons for, it's a good, it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. And put Abby into the bacon. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should be great. And then they have under consideration who might step up into chair role. That's up to the committee. Yeah, and they can work that out. Like that. Everybody good with that one? Mm -hmm. Capital Planning and Capital Budget Committee. We have uh, Holly, Harvey, Jim, and Margaret interested in continuing. Let's see that we have anybody, we have another vacancy, one, two committees. I thought we had somebody <laughs> wanted to fill that vacancy. <laughs> Mm. You didn't get the letter from her? Oh, uh, she didn't show up on the doorstep uh, with her she letter. Was, um, <laughs> she was budget. Oh, she wanted to be a budget. She in the budget. Oh, I see. But okay, I no, thought, I didn't get there. Oh, I thought she wanted to be here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, can we go on this one anyway? <laughs> I'd love to. Because <laughs> <laughs> the budget committee is 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 full. Is the full. budget committee is full? Budget committee's full. Right. What? Is, you and I, why don't we have a little conversation about that, and I'll, I'll call her up. Okay. Well. And somebody who was complaining about things, and we just thought that they'd like to complain, they should also pick up a position here. Uh -huh. So um, I thought she was going to submit it for this. But she confirmed to me that she would twice. Okay. And then All right, well, let me maybe have a change of heart. Boy, a little squeaky wheel. Um, Oh. A personal person that can complain about anything. No, I think <laughs> actually I think she would have been effective there. So I'm. That's why I was shocked that we didn't see your name here. So mm. how about I'll reach out. I have so change of heart. On this committee, we have a select board liaison, and it's currently Pat. Interested in staying with that one? Sure. Not very exciting because it doesn't meet very well. <laughs> Those are the best kind, right? Sometimes. In some ways. Yeah. <laughs> We are Counselor. hoping, well, I should mention to the board, we are hoping to have more interaction with this committee, have them more often. Um, so if that makes a difference, I wanted to make sure that ahead of time so that you know what you're uh, committing to. Yep. But, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you say yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Conservation Commission. We have, I believe, a... Um, candidate that submitted a statement. Um, her name is Emily Lewis. And, so oh, no, I'm sorry, Rachel. 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 There's Rachel two. 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 We have two vacancies. One that goes, one that's being appointed this year and filling the balance of Nancy's till 2022. And the, doesn't matter which one we get to. Did they well, express an interest? I don't know Emily, but I know Rachel well, and I think she would be wonderful, and I wouldn't mind roping her in for two years, huh? longer term. Yes. Yeah. So put her in the 2021. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Emily is relatively new to town, but is a landscaped yeah. uh, architect, and with the boys and King, and oh, um, cool. uh, uh, in their landscape architecture division, and so kind of knows the ropes of large public projects involving them. So I think she'd be fine for that. Looks like there's 
Okay. So Rachel, Emily in the 2022 position, only two years. Rachel in for three. Oh, so the one that says 2020 in the term expiration year, that's a three year. Oh, that's right. It's a three year term rolling right. this year. And that's the one Rachel would go into. And the one that that's uh, to 2022 is completing the last two years of Nancy's. Of Nancy's. Oh, okay. So um, I'll, I'll move that we appoint <coughs> Rachel to the three year um, term and uh, appoint Emily Lewis to the two year vacancy uh, being vacated by Nancy Barber. Okay, so we're just going to add these names and we'll vote it all as one. All at once. Yeah, right. Okay. At the end. Okay, Devi Design Review Advisory Commission. This has a vacancy, no candidate. Okay. And no new appointments. That one's easy. Uh, DRB, we have uh, John Hart and Bill McGrath looking to be reappointed. Sounds good. We have two alternate mm -hmm. openings if anybody's looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. Economic Development Council. I have a quick question. Yep. Do we? Have we customarily had a select board liaison to the development review board? No. Okay. No, they're pretty well defined in statute. Right, that's what, what I What they are, who they, how they function. We wouldn't have any influence. From my attendance at their yeah. meetings, it's been pretty clear. Uh, Economic Development Council, looks like we have three vacancies. And um, Ken... CJ and Mary have asked to be reappointed. And we're waiting to hear from Jay. And Perry is the select board rep. Mm -hmm. That one's done? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Add that to the list to advertise. East Valley Community Group. Um, Mark Kelly and Allison have asked to be reappointed, and Marsha Hammond, who's been with the group from when it started, who lives just over the line actually in Brookfield, is asking to take the vacancy. <clears throat> that group, I met with them Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. I think it was Tuesday night, and they were all asking if she had been appointed yet. So. Mm -hmm. Clearly, plenty of support from that group. Yeah, well, from, from mm -hmm. her. Fine by me. Said, Not yet. Don't get excited. Yep, that's fine. And I am currently the liaison on that. Mm -hmm. There's no takers, so I'll continue. You mm -hmm. can continue. It's your side of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a stranger at the table works better. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. You know what's going on over there. Energy Advisory Committee. Looks like we have a full slate wanting to be reappointed. Okay. Seems fine to me. And Pat, you're okay with being the ex officio on that? No. Speak up, Tom, if you want to be on some of these. Okay. <laughs> or just say all. Oh, yeah. well. well, I know yeah. this is some of your interest because we're going <clears> to <throat> toss the uh, climate change piece to them. You are. Okay. Well, I think we should. Well, uh, you're talking about as a committee member or as a liaison because Pat's already in He's the role. liaison. He's fine the with liaison that. role on that one. Um, There's nothing that keeps you from being committee member either. If you wanted to be a committee member on it, just because you're on the select board doesn't okay. mean you can't. And there's be a nothing committee. that stops you from going. Right. right. Yeah. Other yeah. than if we're going to have more than two board members there, we need to know in advance so it can right. be advertised. So, so, so we don't have a, I would be interested in pursuing the Energy Advisory Committee as a committee member. The committee is. Well, council. Uh, it's, it's, full. it's full. It's full. So it's full. It's full. It's, full, but full. But it's it's uh, not, there's nothing that prevents you from going to the you meetings can go to the participating. Meetings. And they're right after the REDC meeting, so I know when they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, can't I can just, I'm not going to that anymore. I can just uh, show up an hour later. And <laughs> In many ways, they kick the Economic Development Committee out of the conference room. It's 
love their style. They're right at the door. Oh yeah, right they, hover, they hover. They hover and boom. doors open. Y'all gotta get Gar out. Gary Durr makes his presence known, and <laughs> we're out the door. So, so yeah. Jen Phipps is currently the chair of that. You may want to reach out to her, make sure she gets you on the distribution okay. at least, we'll so you know about that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Planning Commission. If I may ask the board to yeah. con uh, consider a change on the form. Actually, the chair is uh, Sunny Holt. Uh, Camden Walters was the, the, the previous right. chair. Uh, now, this is one I, I had the same question about. Has this because this is one I'm really interested in. Have they heretofore had a select board liaison or not? No. Okay. Have not, but Perry's on it, and so he's been sort of the de facto I'm kind liaison. Of okay. Back and forth, I communicate yeah. with them what they need to know from this side, and they okay. share, share here what's going on over there. So, Because based on the tenor of the climate, um, the climate, issue that was before us at town meeting. Um, I think there's some overlap between energy and the planning commission, potentially as we look further down the line to how we can um, use planning to steer the community in a more green direction. So I will be interested in attending. Right now we're those pretty good well. there in that part. We just barely got past the town plan with all those changes. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think you're going to see a lot of interest from the commission to deal with that part right now. Okay, good. I kind of want to fix some of the zoning situations that we're moving forward, like the NDA program. Mm -hmm. Just finished the sign ordinance last night, so Adelpo is going to get a new set of rules once we adopt up on this side. So there's some new things coming. So those are the initiatives we're trying to get through right now. Okay. But we kind of wanted, I uh, think the thought was, you know, when I heard from town meeting and saw on the video was that I think the Energy Committee really should tackle this climate change thing and then bring back some recommendations to the Planning Commission or the Select Board in general to figure out how you can implement these things. But I don't think it's all going to be done through the Planning Commission, right. through the town plan. Right. So I'm not sure that there's any zoning stuff right now that's going to address that because most anything that's going to have to go through, if anybody comes in with a solar project or a wind project, it's all going to end up having to go to CPG. Mm -hmm. And then the planning commission is going to sign off on it. The select board is going to sign off on it. And it's going to go to the regional planning commission. Right. So for anything that's going to be up to a certain size. But I would love to have a conversation with the energy committee from the planning commission standpoint to chat about some of the stuff that was done last time. Yeah. So I think we can okay. make that blend that back together again. Okay. All right, moving right along. Recreation Committee. We have a full slate, all looking to be reappointed, but not yeah, nobody's I responded. I haven't heard from anyone. I'll put them all back on there then. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good, right? Yeah. No, I mean, you got a good committee there. Oh, yeah, that's great. A lot of energy in there, right? Yeah, they're doing wonderful work there. Do you want to stick with that one, Larry? Yes, I would. <clears throat> Water, wastewater. Uh, there uh, was a rescinding of a offer to serve, and that came from Mr. Vosi. He sent me an email asking to be removed from consideration. Okay. And I subsequently agreed. Okay. Great. So we have John Lutz and Dave Farnham looking to be reappointed. And I would assume we're going to reappoint Crystal and Hugh since we just appointed them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To allow that other meeting to take place. Mm -hmm. And Larry, you want to stick with this one? Yes. We're in the middle of ordinance revisions. A bad time to do. Bad time to mix it up here, huh? <laughs> Unless it's not going well. No, no, it's, it's good. It's, good. it's, all good. it's good stuff. Well. It's good stuff. We're making good yeah, progress. Good. I'm Great. here. Or you might need some more ordinances here. <laughs> We're not making, well, actually, we did make a new ordinance, but mostly it's it's like revisions, changes in the state statutes that are, that are, affecting, that us. are affecting things. Yeah. So. Yeah. We had, I think, one of the issues that you were referring to is that we had a property owner in town 
Um, I, I don't think people understand that the meters that we have installed send signals to, to us to let us know that there's a problem. So we received a signal that a meter was experiencing a problem. And it took us a while to be able to get into the property. Well, we finally were able to get in, and we found that the entire meter was gone. And someone had connected the water pipe from the municipal line, or from their line, to the infrastructure of the house. And so that's where we received a, an error message. And so we... That's you know, with it. that we're writing. <clears throat> Actually, that's penalties. perfect. It's just so you're aware of this, this is this can happen. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so apparently, there's there's no good ordinance to to handle what happens in those kinds of situations. That's one of the ones that we're actually creating new. To, yeah, yeah. Well, so that's that the, why I mentioned so that the water wastewater department has has some teeth. official guidelines. It's yes. like yeah, this is what we do if this happens. Yeah. Okay. Some good changes. Can that's why you need to be aware of it so, because it happened. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's that's not frivolous. It's real. Mm -hmm. It's a real very important. The code we received was no water running through it, and then we realized why there was no water running through the meter. Right. Because there's, there's, no there's no meter. meter. So the lesson is put at least a small pipe going through the meter. <laughs> that is the lesson. <laughs> Tampering. 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 Those are exactly the sorts of things we were talking about. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. Dennis. All right. And Fire Operation Review Committee. This is the group that we're digging into all the fire stuff. Um, Matt Fordham has agreed to stay on. Okay, that's great. And you still have two vacancies, or did you? Just he will not? actually take one of them. Oh, he will. So that will take us to one. And you need one more um, select board person for this, or not? Well, we don't need it, but we we had it that at the beginning because hmm. both of us wanted to dig into it. Hmm. We're open to another one if somebody wants to hmm. learn about hazards and pre-incident and learn about how fire work. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't look like Tom's purview over there. No the pass on that one. The pass on that one? <laughs> How often is that meeting? Every meeting? other week. Every other week. Wednesday night. How much longer do you think you're going to be meeting? Could be a while. Um, <laughs> a while. Uh, so what we're finding out is that um, there are no pre-incident plans for a lot of our bigger structures in town, or a lot of our higher risk areas. So we're creating those. Uh, there are no pre-incident plans at all in Braintree. So there's, they have until the 15th to identify structures they think or places they think ought to have them. Then we'll complete those. That should give us the data coupled with a lot of the other information we've already gathered to start looking at hazards and do a hazard assessment on each of these. Uh, and then we'll start looking at that as compared to equipment, trainings, all that, to figure out <clears throat> where our weak spots are and areas that we need to do different. What we have also done is looked at um, like the review that's done uh, in the past for assessing fire coverage we had each department would go forth and be reviewed independently. And when a department gets reviewed, they look at number of people that respond to an incident, equipment that's available, things like that. And of course, we had just each one of them looking at it alone, where if we looked at it as a town, we would score much better and everybody's ratings would drop, which would save everybody money on their fire insurance. So, you know, in the case of the village, it showed uh, an average of eight point something mm -hmm. firemen responded to an actual fire. When we know we've actually got um, at least 10 coming from all three, right? So we have more like 30. And it said they had one tanker. Well, no, we had four tankers and that responded. So what we need to do is redefine how that is going to be done. 
and once we do that, then they will get them to come back and redo it. It look so it's quote, locking through a lot of that. So even though they mutually aid respond, it's not counting. Mutual aid doesn't count in it doesn't ISO. count in this, right? It's what your actual department has available to them. And so this way, so we were so independent and, thinking yes. to put it nicely in each of these departments that we said we are we're our own department and our you know, our other town-owned departments are mutual aid to us, which isn't really true. Right? The town owns all the equipment. Right. It's all available. Right. It's all available. It's one fire department with yeah. three stations. With three stations. This is how it should be looked at for that exercise. So, you know, it's redefining some of that stuff. So, that, And we know that we're going to get some resistance, right? So, because of the turf and... But if we're going to save everybody when we're some looking, money. Especially when we're looking at that fire risk assessment, it needs to look at everything the town brings mm -hmm. to the table. Mutual aid is another town coming in to help right. us. It's not our own town coming to help us. So it's breaking through some of that. That's a thought process you know, right now that needs to change, right? That's what we're talking about. A lot of it's just thought. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we look at training and we pay to have this department trained and six of them show up for the training, but we could train 20, 25 people at the same time. Well, all three stations should be at that training. And then that counts and lowers your ratings. So it's, it's digging in even to some of those issues to say, okay, from going forward, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so it won't be easy, but if they, Quit sending people and showing up, it'll be really easy. <laughs> mm. so, um, that's what that committee's doing, and that's where we're at right now. Is um, Matt Fordham did an excellent job of developing not only a format for the pre incident planning, but a training manual to go with it, wow. and that's been rolled out to the other fire departments. So, and he's actually offered to go over and walk them through the sites that they need to get done for this exercise to help them see why they're important and what the data is we're going to get out of them. Out of those pre-incident plans, there should come like a manual that each department will have so when they respond on the way, they know what they're facing. If this building has CO2 tanks at this location in it. Should put us in a lot better position. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good group. So we need two more people. Okay. Well, we've got one that we're toying with, but he's not. We're going to end up with and whatnot. But uh, we've but got a fair number of them that have been identified to come to certain meetings when we're going to be dealing with certain so topics. We have some a little bit of expertise coming from some other areas. Yeah. yeah. And I think that it's works, a, right? It's getting what you need. Yeah. For being picky. All right. Any other changes to the list before we vote in what we put to do? Not entertain a motion. Here you go, Tom. Now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I will so move. Okay, second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Reviewing bids for the highway trucks. Hi, uh, yes, we closed the uh, the bid process uh, last week. We received um, several. Uh, we received four total. Uh, we also received one bid specifically just for reconfiguring the the chassis to add the plow items on, on it. Um, of all the uh, quotes that we received or the bid we received, one came in uh, lowest for both trucks and also included the body work. So they had teamed up with Tenco, a company that does the, the body work. Um, and the offer was for, or is for 356000 which is roughly about um, 60000 below what had been approved by, by the selector and by town voters at the meeting. Um, the added bonus is that this offer will not require the town to pick up the chassis anywhere and then deliver it to the body manufacturer 
Uh, this is all part of the same process. If we accept this, the chassis owner will deliver the chassis to the body location. They will then perform the work and give us the trucks fully fully operational. Um, we have also recently sent out notices requesting um, interest rates for payments of the truck. Uh, we have come in as low as 2.3% for, uh, for annual APR. Um, yeah, about is, another week, maybe it'll get lower. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll, we'll keep and adding. Lock it in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can get a yeah, we can get a lockdown if, if on this. A, if they're deliverable. Yeah, this is a good time to be. Yeah, you know, be a good time to be shopping for interest for, rates. For interest rates, yeah. yeah. It, it is a considerable amount, but um, you know the, the two trucks are definitely needed, and these new trucks will have. The hydraulics that we need, one of the trucks will have a um, shelf plow, which essentially is lifted up partially. It is able to scrape off uh, top of guardrails and top of certain areas. Um, it'll have a manual, one, one truck will be a manual truck, which was requested by the highway department, and the other will be an automatic. So that helped to keep the price lower than, than, than normal. So, highway department felt comfortable with the price. They, they uh, helped, us build, helped, helped us to build the specs. So I'd like to recommend the board approve one of the the bids. Questions? Um, yes. Um, why do they want one manual and one automatic? Uh, one of the drivers specifically just preferred having the uh, one of the drivers that has the new truck coming in prefer to have the, the manual uh, uh, truck preference. personal preference. And uh, all the other members know how to drive the manual, so it won't be just that one person. So. There, as the other drivers can also drive it. Um, it gives them more control uh, with changing their gears. If they need to change, they set what they that's what they've confirmed. Um, the automatic is more expensive. Automatic is more expensive. So, why not? What's the argument about against having them both be manual? Um, it's just that the highway was. One of the drivers, I think, prefers just the manual truck, and it, it makes it easier. To just, we could force them to take the the manual, but you know, oh, I, I, I would prefer. Yeah. yeah. I think the, it's it's not worth forcing it. Yeah. Forcing the issue, and as you're, especially when you get into snow control, and what you got going on, if you have so many things going on, some people would just assume leave it as an automatic, mm -hmm. and be able to hand, to pay attention to all the other stuff they got to pay attention to. Yeah. yeah. But I think you've got some folks. In our garage, that have been long-time truck mm -hmm. operators, yeah. even before they came here, they were over the road. One of them was an over-the-road driver, I know, and um, so probably to them, that's second nature. And adjusting to the truck doing everything for you is foreign to them. However, speaking from somebody who owns a lot of trucks, the majority of my fleet now is automatic, simply because of. Different operators, different vehicles, different clutch situations, different shifting patterns, and it's just a lot easier for me to deal with automatic transmission situations than it is to deal with manuals. I've got less people that can drive them, and I've got more options. So going forward, you know, I would support, you know, certainly support an automatic vehicle because I just think it's probably going to be where we're going to be ending up anyways. And the newer automatic trucks are I'm, no issues. With, I've never had a transmission issue with any of the automatic trucks I've had in the last 10 years. So I'm in favor of automatics going forward. Mm -hmm. Seems like you might have more problems with manual. I think you get into a lot of situations with manual. You get into you know, climbing hills around here, shifting in the middle right. of a hill. You just get a truck that now is stuck in the middle of the hill because they missed a gear. Right. Those are things that can happen, right. whereas an automatic is just going to shift down and you're going to keep moving. So if you're plowing snow, I would think I would want an automatic. What's the difference in cost? Do you know? uh, roughly about 6000 uh, bid price for the 18 speed is 116,370. Bid price for the automatic is 123,530. So, roughly about six thousand dollars. One clutch job is going to be way more than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One clutch job oh, yeah. is going to yeah. be way more than that. Yeah. <coughs> is that? Is that a good enough reason for us to say that they should both be automatics then? If there's, is it really just one driver who 
this lobbying for a manual, and everybody else is okay. Uh, well, I didn't get into specifics. I just wanted to make sure that if we purchase the manual truck, that the driver, the, the highway department would be able to drive it. They all are able to drive it. Um, the, the department and the director felt that having a manual would be beneficial to them. Okay. Um, I didn't ask them specifically what the benefit is, but one of them did specifically feel like the manual would, would benefit them. You can roll start a manual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you say, Jim? You can roll start a manual. You can't roll start us an automatic. <laughs> Going back to the day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Been there many times. If the board would like, um, well, I, I don't. I, I mean, if that's what the highway department is saying that they would like, I mean, I don't know that I feel that comfortable second guessing them. So I could take the option to the highway department and say the board suggests that you consider two automatic, and leave the option to the highway department. They may, maybe they didn't relate to me, or they did, and I, I can't recall it now. The reason for preferring one automatic to one manual, but it gives it gives me the option to be able to share to them. There's an extra 6,000 that we could spend on two automatics. And if the decision from the highway department is still no, we prefer the manual for this reason, then we could go with the manual and the automatics. So we don't have, so we which, don't have to hold it off. We can let them make that decision because either way it's going to be under what was, exactly. has been approved. Mm -hmm. what, what species here were we talking about? Free uh, Allison, right, with Allison, right, with Allison, yeah, that's... Which is also consistent with what they already have in the fleet. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, I'm a big fan of Allison transmissions, but I could be proven wrong, too. <laughs> what they all got. Any more questions? If not, anybody want to take a step motion? I'll try it. I'll move that we accept the low bid as recommended by Adolfo um, and with the, the, um, the flexibility of um, making it uh, two automatics rather than one manual and one automatic um, at the sort of discretion of the highway department in their conversations with Adolfo. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Merchants Row. The uh, RFP bid window closed over a week ago for the project on Merchant Row and Pleasant Street. We received two bids. The first um, uh, was from uh, Du Bois and King, and the second is from Pathways. In your packets, you have um, essentially a cost breakdown. Uh, it didn't include a timeline, I believe I did, for um, the Pathways proposal, but not for the Du Bois and King proposal. Um, the recommendation from staff is to accept the Du Bois and King proposal uh, based on cost and the firm's um, history with Randolph infrastructure and uh, knowledge of the project. So when I looked at these, it's hard to compare them. Yeah. Are we being asked to approve only the top portion for the design and construction phases for Dubois? Yes, just for 14, the... 14,000? Uh, it would be just for the engineering portion of it and then they would that they provided a construction option uh, of what they think it would cost without having gone through the process of designing, engineering, and doing the work. Um, that was something that was not a part of the request for the, uh, not the RFP, they just provided it, which is why Pathways did not include it. But this is We're specific. comparing 14,000 to 27,000. That's correct. Right. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's not pretty easy. And then, in, in here you say the grant awarded is 50%, but I'm not totally clear. Does that mean that the town is going to have to um, pay for it? The total cost of the town is 153, or is the total cost of the town half of 153? Half of 153. Okay. 
the 153 is the total cost of a project, including infrastructure and the stormwater component. Any questions, comments, motions? I'm exhausted from that last one. You are? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to make a motion to accept the bid submitted by Du Bois and King for the work on Merchants Row and Pleasant Street. And I will second that having become quite familiar with this and by the uh, Arts Council grant. Great. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Subgrant agreement with Two Rivers for the Local Hazard Mitigation Plan. The town received a grant from the state to update its Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, which will expire uh, later this year. Uh, we select board uh, accepted the only bid submitted um, uh, by tourers out of Quichi to help us with the local hazard mitigation plan. And this is part of the process where we now have a subgrant agreement with them so that they can help us with the work. It, uh, after reviewing it, it appears it's a very standard uh, Two Rivers uh, uh, subgrant agreement where they agreed to perform certain work, they agreed to share updates with the town, and then complete the final product. The grant for this was more than the estimate, is that correct? To be uh, 10,000? Uh, it's 7,000, but it's 10,000, I'm sorry, you're right, but a percentage of it has to be paid by the town, which is 25% of uh, the total amount. Of the two yeah. So when I looked at this, um, what we should be doing then is getting our, if I'm not mistaken, the pre-incident planning mm -hmm. that's taking place, the data that we're going to be collecting in that and the effort for that will roll into this that's or right. could roll into this, uh, which yes. means that our firefighters that are doing that pre-incident planning, if they kept time reports, could count as the town's local share in this project. So our complete maps will be in kind. Um, the in kind work uh, has started as of, I believe, a month ago. So anything, any work that has been done that will benefit this particular agreement, as of a month ago, can count toward our in kind match. So we could potentially not have any cash payment on behalf of the town. It's all done by work from volunteers. I don't know that we have the word out there on that, so I'll okay. communicate that out to the guys that are okay. doing it. There is a spreadsheet that I uh, will, will share with the committee at the next meeting and ask them to start keeping track of their hours on the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. or just hours of work that they've done, and then I can transfer it onto the spreadsheet. Okay. So this would cover a hazard like a uh, tank car turning over on the road? Is that the kind of hazard? Uh, most of the um, uh, flood zone areas, uh, areas of high, uh, um, oh, man, okay. yeah, but not, uh, not necessarily oh, truck rolling over. It could, I believe, it also covers because we have the rail running through the middle of Randolph. It would cover a response for the rail as well. So it's any any hazard that any hazard that can exist within the town that is a standing hazard as opposed to something that just can randomly happen should be a part of the plan. So high water that would compromise uh, uh, toxic chemical yeah. uh, uh, pollution. Yeah. Access, might shut down roads mm -hmm. for access, that type of stuff too. Okay, any motions on that one? To approve uh, two rivers proposal. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Casella Waste Management. Yeah, Terry, you and Terry. No, you accepted the grant. Okay. Um, no, yeah, and this is to accept the sub grant agreement. Okay. Uh, this notice. 
uh, in your packets uh, was received by the town, sent by Casella. They are informing us that um, they were informed of a rate increase uh, by the Chipman Public Waste District for cycling. That rate increase is being passed on to Casella and subsequently passed on to um, folks who visit the Randolph Transfer Station. The rate increase, uh, proposed rate increase is uh, 50 cents uh, more than what was proposed back in September of 2019. So it's going from $2 to $2.50 per 30 gallon bag of recycling. Only a 25 cent increase for any additional 15 gallon bin and the self hauler commercial rate is increasing by three dollars from fifteen to eighteen dollars. And our contract with them just requires them to make us aware of it, not to have, we don't have a say or don't have a say, just that. just a public notice. So we are aware. Well, I would just want to send want them to know that this like recycling is like it's almost as, as expensive as trash but then like it's getting close yeah. and um there's going to oh. be a, a, some folks out there who are going to say why why, why, spend, with, why bother why spend the time dealing with all this if, if it's going to cost me basically the same amount of money to get rid of my recycling i'm, I'm a little worried that we're going to be putting a lot more recycles into the trash under these higher and higher rates this is a this is a situation that's spinning down to them too, though. From right, but they have a choice in how they handle it, and for a long time they subsidized their recycling with the trash fees. Mm -hmm. But they've made a decision a while ago to either not do that or not do it as much as they used to. And yeah. so, um, I, 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 I think that it was they've raised good our policy. rates twice in the last. But yeah. wasn't the issue that the trash volume was dropping? So they couldn't subsidize it anymore. As we continue to increase what's being recycled, the volume of trash that they were underwriting a lot of the cost for recycling was gone. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember them saying that. I thought they were just the volume they were just, shifted. They just didn't want to increase the rates on. There's also reduction fees anymore. for trash. The trash, if the treaty's correct, the, the trash was subsidizing the. Recycling, there wasn't sufficient trash to subsidize it anymore. Um, and so that was the reason for the split. So now the trash rates decreased considerably at the last rate increase for recycling uh, because now it was okay, now it's separate. There wasn't enough trash, now we'll only charge for trash, which is much lower than it was before. My, you know, my recollection is that their argument last time was that they felt like pe that there were people who, who would bring just trash. And no recycling to the transfer station. It was the opposite. Yeah. It was just recycling. Oh no, that's right. It was just the opposite. And so, yeah. so people were, were getting rid of their recyclables for free, and and getting rid of their trash some other way. Yeah. Right. And so they were thinking that people who were bringing their trash were subsidizing people who weren't bringing trash. Was the was the problem? But I'm not sure that. I don't know. Just I just hate to encourage people to throw their recycles in the trash and it seems like it would be, I don't know, and I guess I, without seeing the numbers it's hard to know for sure, but um, it might be worth it to ask some folks to pay a little more for their trash so that some other thieves, people can get rid of recycling for, for lower cost, even if it's not fair, completely fair. To have people pay more to get rid of their garbage so people don't have to pay to get rid of their recycling. Yeah. Instead of a pay as you go. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. The price of this is getting up to but right, where by the time you look, there's no no discussion here about weights. It's called 30 gallon trash bags. So right. if you start weighing that up, you're probably getting closer to where it's cheaper by the ton to throw it away. Oh my gosh, you're probably right. I mean, I'm, I'm well, pretty sure. You, I'm right yeah, because if you just go there with your household trash, it's by volume, not by weight. That's right. But if you were to just Get rid of it by weight instead. Yeah, it's by weight. I'm telling you right now. Because the recyclables is, is all really I'm light. thinking you're finding that it's going to be cheaper by the ton to throw those recyclables away than just to pay for recycling. Yeah, yeah there's probably some people the, who are making that calculation, right? right? So my, you know, this is a Montpelier problem, if you want my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. This is a legislature that's, issue. That's, that's yeah. true. If you that's want true. to if you want to promote recycling, then you've got to figure out how to get the cost back down. And, and we're looking at yard and food waste yeah. being mandated July first. Mm -hmm. so, Without uh, in what I see, not not efficient systems. Yeah. Yeah. Nightmare systems. Yeah. <laughs> so we're 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 prepared for the food scrap delivery. We have bins at the transfer station. We have to ask the attendants for the food bins, the food scrap bins. The challenge is that the legislature didn't mandate clear trash bags, so we don't know what is in the trash bag other than to yeah, split a bag of cards on the force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I did a test run over a year ago. I threw my food scraps in the bin, came back four months later with more food scraps, threw them in the same bin, but it was only my food scraps from a month or two or three ago that were in the bin and it was winter time so it was frozen they had been really removed mm -hmm. um, so we have asked folks and people are aware of the food scrap issue and there are people in town who have the food scraps um, but they just are not removing them from the trash bag and there's no way for us to tell if there's food scraps in the trash bag so we have the bins we can promote the bins it's just up to the residents to tell us is the anticipation that we're getting a little off topic here, but it's all germane? Um, is the anticipation that those food scraps will go to um, Chitney Solid Waste as well? Because they have a huge composting yeah. facility yeah. operation yeah. there. So. Yeah. And we do have a list of composting firms on the Mountain Alliance website. Uh, mm -hmm. Options for folks to look at that. Um, yeah, we, we have we done as much as we should to promote it, no, but uh, by, by this point, what little has been done over, over the years, our population hasn't changed very much, so people are aware of the composting firms that are around and the efforts that are happening, and we regularly hear from folks saying, okay, we have to start composting or we have to start doing the food scrap thing, so the information is out there. It's just a matter of how we can ensure that food scraps are not in the trash can. I don't think we're going to hire a food scrap police person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my dog. Okay. Anyway, I just want to. I know. I know. Hire, hire sent I'm, I'm totally in agreement with you. I think this is, you know, it's, it's, it's an offset that they're charging now to make up for the volume that's flipped the other way. So more and more stuff's recycled. Well, so. they don't have a market for and it. They don't have a market for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. It's, it's, a huge, it's a huge problem. We're not going to solve problem. it here. I think. We can't solve it. Just yeah. uh, the magic sensor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Next up is grants. We have the animating infrastructure ratification. That uh, is the grant that Tom and the will work on. Mm -hmm. You have information in your packets about the grant. Uh, it no. was previously approved by the board. And, uh, I submitted the grant um, on behalf of the town under the umbrella of the Arts and Culture Committee um, on Tuesday, which was the deadline day. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, there are only three of these grants that are going to be issued. This is a special um, allocation under the Animating Infrastructure Grant Program, three $5,000 grants. Um, and I have sat on a number of arts grant committees before, and I've also, believe me, filed my share of grant applications with the Arts Council. And um, I think we have a really strong application here. Uh, I was delighted to find out about the Merchants Row Pleasant Street infrastructure project, because that's exactly what these grants are intended to do, is to, is to put in place a a public design process that results in the generation of a work of art that in then, then enhances an existing, uh, a coincident public infrastructure project. So it's, it's, it just nails every criteria of the grant um, to a T. So. And the expectation is that I reached out after sending the grant in the other day, I reached out to um, former colleague at the, at the Arts Council who is overseeing this particular grant program and um, they are anticipating that we'll hear as it's stated in this uh, information sheet by the end of April. 
So, um, and kind of just, just to add to that, I think one of the other strong points of the grant application is that uh, the Arts and Culture Committee envisions this as sort of being a seed project or a demonstration project for what their long-range plan calls uh, for um, uh, a mural walk through the village so that there would be murals tied to Randolph history, life, art and culture, and daily life um, on uh, highly visible public spaces throughout the village. And this would be the first one. Because of the grant that we approved through email, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so right. I just need a motion to ratify it. Oh, I can make a motion to ratify that. So crazy. You're getting stressed over there, and I was hoping you'd step up for this one. <laughs> okay, oh well. I already saw the design. I saw some designs, so I'm pretty happy about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, but the designs were just for effect. I know they're, they're just for an effect. Ones. I know they're not the final ones, but I was very <laughs> impressed with what I saw so far. We so. had to submit um, one of the things they asked for besides photos of the site, which I went out and took copious photographs of the site. They asked for some samples of what we might. And Phil Godenschwager, who many of you may know, um, I thought he was going to come up with some really rough sketches. He came up with full architectural rendering of the Winslow block north facing wall and the barber shop, and then put full color, two full color yeah. mural options on the side of each rendering. It's like, I don't know how much time he put in, but. Well, maybe uh, for an artist, not much, but it's sure impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. All right, uh, we have a motion waiting for a second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Downtown Transportation Fund grant. Some of the ones we approved. Also approved through email. This would be to help um, purchase the, our hanging potted plants, uh, restriping the crosswalks. It also was um, very instrumental in that this is one. It was phase two of this longer vision that we have to make the, the village a little more walkable, connect all of our, all of our uh, recreation and and uh, site infrastructure that we also used the animating infrastructure grant as part of a way to continue to promote this grant so that the grants are kind of helping to promote each other and building on previous successes. Okay. Any yep, I can make a motion to move that one forward. Stabilization agreement for Modio Rec. This so, appears to be following the same format as we have with all the others. Exactly. Yeah, we uh, Josh worked on this. He took the direction of the select board, and that it had to be the pretty much very close, if not the same as the previous uh, tax stabilization agreements. This is what the board asked for. Right. Any questions? We're going to have uh, a new policy sometime soon, we hope, right? For tax stabilization. It's still being worked on. It's being worked on. Exactly. Yeah. And I've seen drafts of it that the. the well, we've seen the draft of it. Yeah, the draft hasn't changed very much since then, but uh, the committee hasn't fully finalized the draft to bring back to the board for final consideration. But it should be very similar to the draft that we've seen. Um, Rocky Farm is Modio Rec. Yes. Right, yeah. right. Okay. I only have one change to this, and it's going to happen probably for the next two years periodically. It's, my name's spelled wrong on the signature. Is line. it? Oh, uh, I was your name. I learned a while ago. <laughs> That's not you? Nope. No, it happens. I mean, if I, uh, if, if I had a nickel for every time that happened. You're making life, a note of that, um, though, aren't you? I would, I would be very <laughs> substantively retired. The issue is you spell your name wrong. Yeah, well, that's good. Your name wrong. <laughs> My father changed the name from A-Y-R-E-Y to A-Y-R-E-S when he went into um, the insurance business because he thought it would be easier to spell. 
<laughs> okay. Well, All right, well, you can make the correction. Yeah. yeah. Would you mind, because the board's already here, so we can get the ball rolling, signing that one with the understanding that we're going to then all future no, forms. Yeah. I'll put my initial next, next to it. Next to it. Next to it. Yeah, just change it to scratch. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no that should be a substan substant substant right. paper, no yeah. chance. We got Mr. Ayers' right. name correct. Right. Right. Yeah. On your uh, nameplate. All right. Do we have any motion to accept that? Oh, I can make a motion that we accept the tax stabilization agreement for uh, Motillo Rec, Rocky Mountain, or Rocky Farm properties. I'll start with that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Other business. Well, just as a, as a side note, I believe they are scheduled to open later this month. That's amazing. So, That's what I hear. Yeah, they're getting ready to have indoor simulators, the workout gym. <laughs> you golfers are going to be happy, oh, man. Yeah. They're in there, and so yeah. they're, they're moving. So. Yeah, it was, uh, I'll be very quick with the manager's report. I, I only have two things because I always say I'm quick, and then I end up taking 20, 30 minutes. So uh, we have coming up for the next meeting a certificate of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory. This is a yearly request that uh, Agency of Transportation sends to towns just so that we reconfirm that we are committed to bridge and road standards that we operate under the state bridge and road standards that are within what they call the orange book, uh, AOP's um, transportation Bible. Uh, guidelines. So it also guidelines. gives us preference and higher federal reimbursement yeah. during natural disasters. Yeah. So I'll bring that to the board next uh, at the next meeting. Uh, we received it later than the agenda uh, allowed us to make a change. Uh, and then we, although I could have made a request to the board to alter the agenda, I spoke with V-Transit and they said, no big deal, you can apply for it. You could get it to us before April 15th, so the next select board meeting is probably. And they have, they have to renew it every year because standards keep changing. Their standards can change depending on the year. Um, and then if we just renew every year, the state's able to check that box and keep, to keep our records. Uh, the other item is that there is a call scheduled for tomorrow. Um, so I pulled together a call, well, I pulled together a conference call and invited several of the major groups in town, uh, VTC, White River Valley Ambulance, Sheriff's Department, um, Chandler, uh, Kimball, to share information about what, what we are each doing about the coronavirus or COVID-19. Uh, our local emergency management plans uh, or even our hazard mitigation plans don't address virus issues. Uh, our plans typically address major disasters and where we can house or warehouse people if they are without a home. But in this situation, we're not looking to bring people together into a room so they can sleep together. We're trying to make sure that we don't spread through community spread. So um, as far as the town, the county and the state, we're a little bit in uncharted waters, which I think is why the state is really um, trying to stay proactive about it. We get updates from them daily, but um, so this is just more for us to be able to make sure that if I'm going to put up a, you know, sign that says "Wash your hands," uh, uh, if I'm already going to go out, we could take something to the high school, we could take something to VTC, or VTC has something out that our messaging is uniform mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. spread out all over the place. I do know that Stagecoach went through a process where they were dis disinfecting their buses. Um, they continue to do that regularly. They've committed to being on the call tomorrow. Um, it's just a general call just to make sure we're all, we all know what we're doing. That will take place at 9 a.m. Um, and if anyone's interested, let me know and I can forward the call information to you. Um, 9 a.m. tomorrow. 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and that is it. So I have, a, I have a question. I wasn't sure whether to raise it during other business or following your report. but. Um, <coughs> I'm sure it's very preliminary right now because the town meeting was only um, a week and a half ago or so, two and a half, whatever it's been. Um, what is your present thinking about 
the letter that was requested with regard to climate action in the resolution that was overwhelmingly passed. Um, I, I, so I will share with the board that at, at town meeting, there was an issue that caused residents to call me a, an obstructionist. Uh, someone a climate change denier, which is, um, the issue that I raised was that the article in the ballot um, didn't address what may be in effect with town ordinances and the land use regulations. The argument that had been made was that it, the wording of the article didn't matter. We have residents saying it doesn't matter, just pass it. Words don't matter. And what I was trying to convey to them is that I wanted to help them to craft another article, so ask them to delay it, can craft something that was in, in uniform or lockstep with what we have as town laws to prevent a potential employer for, or a developer from suing us. Um, that also spurred a comment from our town moderator. She also suggested that if anyone is going to be asking for signatures to put an article on the ballot, that they sh should feel welcome to call her. She's an attorney. She will help them to craft an article. So the messaging from town staff and from our town moderator was, was the same. Some of us said to folks more than others that you know, there are missions here. Others offered to help to craft language. Um, the challenge that now is being faced by town staff is we had the proponents of the article who often and regularly said words don't matter. And even when I asked, I said, I can't be asked to draft a letter without clear direction. I need direction. I can't just accept a broad comment because everyone from that particular group may have different opinions about what to include in the letter. And that, now we're, we've created a situation where, again, the proponents of the article say words don't matter. And now we're in a situation where drafting a letter, the words will matter. I have a feeling that if I propose a letter to the board for you all to sign, potentially send to our legislators if it said, uh, at town meeting the voters voted on this on Article 31 on climate change, you know, we'll, we're fulfilling the obligation set forth by the voters, passing it along. Um, do we, at that point, check the box that the voters put in, before us? Absolutely. We select or send a letter to our legislators. But I think the challenge now is we will have a group of two, three, four dozen people who all have an opinion of what will, should be in this letter. And drafting the letter in committee is going to be very difficult. You know, I could draft something together, share it with folks. Um, they may have opinions about what, what would be in there. Uh, I think that's a challenge. So I, I could take a, a stab at the letter. Uh, I could probably you know, maybe suggest to the board that we pass this on to the Environmental Committee, have the Environmental Committee deal with the issue. Energy. The, energy the Energy Committee. Energy committee I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Energy Committee. Um, but, um, well, the issue also specifically on the environment as well, so maybe it should go to both committees. So, um, conservation. so my question is, conservation committee, yeah. does anybody, did anybody ask the question, did anybody there, have they read the town plan? Do they know what the town plan says in the energy policy? I mean, that would have been, that's a question I would have asked had I been there, but I wasn't. So yeah. I'm just asking the question is, because we addressed this pretty heavily in the town plan. Yeah. And, you know, it was discussed, you know, pretty much in depth. So if you need a letter, I mean, you could actually take, you know, the first paragraph of the town plan. Which says. Which says, you know, the goals are, this is the goal, is to conserve energy, increase efficiency, and switch fuel types to renewable sources in order to meet goals for reducing overall energy use by 35% in 2050 and have 90% of the energy supplied by renewable sources by 2050. So we have, you know, we've addressed this on a townwide level. So, and then there's policies and action items to implement those policies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have looked at this and discussed this in depth quite clearly. And there was a subcommittee that was put together by the Planning Commission to work on this. And that committee was in existence for what, six months? And mm -hmm. came back and said, okay, what having your town plan is good. So, 
I'm yeah. not sure what we're gonna. What like, are we doing here? That what? sounds like a great idea. I we think can use that language. I think to it's form here. the form the, the brunt of the, of the letter. Then it's it's already something that we've ratified. It's something that we've discussed. And Correct. It's, it's an official. It's already an official document. It and it was approved by Twin, Two Rivers. Yeah. I mean, we, so, we've got yeah. a document that I puts this into play. I don't have the language of the resolution in but front of me right now, but that seems, yeah. by and large, Pat has the It seems like it'll, there was, there was no, I, 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 the, the yeah. concern that I, I expressed was start. that the article said one thing, and then at the end it said that the town shall send a letter, but there was never any guidance as to what should be in the letter. But in this case, this could be exactly what. Uh, what does the shell language say? I believe it says that the town shall send a letter to and it lists on the state legislators. Uh, should this article pass, a letter shall be sent to the town, to the town of Randall, to our state representatives and senators, the speaker of the Vermont House, the president pro tempore of the Vermont Senate, and the governor. That's all it says. Yeah. Is a letter shall be sent. So we could. So it does not read. dictate what the content of the letter yeah. is. And that wording was... Well, yeah, and, and I can share with you that the reason this wording got here is because this is what came down from us. This came down through the Regional Planning Commissions to us as to what what they would like to see. I mean, I spent yeah. here countless evenings listening to Tuber's Adequichi show right. us maps and all the things we needed to move this initiative forward. So I think we're already doing this. Mm -hmm. We can send a letter, but we're already here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're working on this. We're already, we're already doing I could preface that I could preface uh, if it needs to be reworded. I don't think it would have to be reworded, but I could preface it with a paragraph saying this letter is being sent in accordance with the wishes of the voters per their passage of Article 31 at town yeah. meeting this yeah, year. Yeah, Article 31, and, and then, then you can reference paragraph. the pieces in the town plan. And, and then the only thing that is, I mean, the town plan speaks to 2050. This calls for. Um, urging the state of Vermont to commit to 100% renewable energy for all new infrastructure. I mean, I don't see any harm in the letter saying that the townspeople of Randolph by a you know, sizable vote, whatever, however you word it, just reiterating some of the language that's in here, and then saying, you know, consist, something like consistent with these goals, our town plan already, um, establishes yeah. those goals. Um, I could pull the draft together and share it with the select board at the future meeting, or, or pull the draft together, share it with the Energy and Conservation Commission. You think that? I was thinking that we would quote the article because that's what was passed. That's true. However, the, the challenge with doing that is is one of the concerns that I raise at town meeting is that the voters in the article are saying that the town is to, of course it's not binding, but that the town is to not permit certain type of businesses or certain type of infrastructure. And my concern that I shared with, with the voters is we cannot deny a permit if it's in accordance with our land use regulations because now we're, we're putting the town in a position where that exists, the land use regulations exist, and if we deny a permit based on the land use reg reg regulations, a uh, developer can, can sue us, if, you know, or an environmental agency can but sue us. But that infrastructure was related to a pipeline, correct? Doesn't it say that? Right. It's pipeline yeah. or any number of things. Okay. Well, the pipeline point's moot, because that's going to have to go through state permitting processes before, I mean, we would never see that here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that that's a non-issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I don't think. Now, I don't. You know, there was other pieces of that, and I'm, I'm sure. Was it? Was there a portion about transport in there? Uh, I don't recall, but there is a portion it? about encouraging visit uh, or uh, encouraging landowners, but it doesn't tell us how to encourage landowners. Encourage landowners, municipalities, and farmers to implement practices that build healthy soil, which increases. Oh, incre carbon oh increase the carbon retention. Right. Mm -hmm to yeah, pull the planet and mitigate flooding and drought. But again, all of this is urge the town and its officials to do its part to meet these recommendations and those within the town plan uh, by committing to efforts such as. So I don't, 
it's not clear to me whether the intent of the resolution was for that, for, for sections 2, A, B, C, D, and E mm -hmm. to be referenced in the letter. Someone suggested at the town meeting that if the letter referenced section 1, parts A and B, which speak, speak specifically to what's in the town plan and what's in the state comprehensive energy plan, yeah. that might honor the intent of... I agree. I think I mean, it was Miles. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it was Miles. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I don't know that part 2, A through 3 is specifically relevant to the town of Randolph. I don't know that that's germane to our state legislators, senators, the governor, or the Senate pro tem. Or right. 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 Well, if you can just, figure out how to craft it, I mean, I mean, there's no harm in sending it. I'm just yeah. saying. It does need to show that it was a floor vote at yeah. town meeting. Yeah. That this yeah. was at versus a town wide. I mean, the town, the whole town has the option to go to town meeting, mm -hmm. but I think the fact that it was floor vote that was taken there. Yeah. Because there was some dynamic in the conversation yeah. of that too that needs to be captured. It was in the loose formulation in my head of how to create this letter. There were a number of different versions, and one of them was very just technical. Uh, voters gathered gathered sufficient signatures to be on the ballot, and the signatures were collected, and it was essentially alluding to a community grassroots effort that garnered all these signatures put on the ballot in a town meeting. It was a great discussion about this particular article. And then it voted, uh, it passed. You know, I don't have the, the vote because mm -hmm. it was by hand. So it was acknowledging, treating everything that you're, you're pointing to, that signatures were collected, it was voted on at town meeting, residents spoke passionately about the issue, and then include the paragraph from the town plan. I still think it's important to send the article because that's what matters. That's not going to get us in any trouble. No, I, I think that's a part of the issue. We're not I, doing anything. But I, on. I don't disagree with you, Pat. But I, I, that's one of the challenges that I raised with with the group is that I I, I asked them for direction, like what do we put so in the they letter? Passed, they passed the article. That right, but, the direction. Right, but I even asked them for. But does the article have more weight than the zoning bylaws? Well, I'm not saying we can't send the other stuff too, but. Why can't we just clearly say this is what the voters voted that passed overwhelmingly and they wanted you to know that. And, and then you can add whatever else. And I'm fine with that. And then you can, you know, you can be, you know, beyond that, you can, ex you can explain that, you know, we, we are also, you know, our town plan calls mm -hmm. for this. So I think there's no harm in sending it. I mean, I you just send it as an addendum. Yeah. We can't, we, we can I, it doesn't commit us to anything, really. No, but I, I, I struggle with it because it doesn't paint the full picture. And I think the challenge that I see is what I advise the residents at town meeting, which is there could be potential for conflict. And if we send a letter with strictly just the article, you know, ultimately it's up, to, it's up to the board, but I feel that painting a full picture is essential in telling our legislators, look, this is what the voters wanted. This here it is. Everything that you know was at town discussed at town meeting. However, they were advised that this may conflict with existing land use regulations and could create conflict internally to the town. Okay. But that the paints letter, a full picture. The letter the letter's not gonna carry any additional legal weight than this document that passed the town meeting. No, but I but I feel so, that the reason for the reason why I'm very and you know, I understand that it's it's definitely me. The way I the way I, I do think sometimes it's very. It, our legislators will see this, and they are then going to create laws that affect the whole state. So if we are sending them something that's very one sided as opposed to a full picture, we are essentially complicit in a, in a system where we are giving them half information. We're telling them the voters wanted this, and then they may then create laws based on. This narrow view. Uh, yeah, I disagree. I, I think I think, I think the letter needs to very simply reflect, you know, in a in a good faith what way the intent of the of the the voters of, of, the, of, of what the voters mm -hmm. passed, mm -hmm. and and we're done with it, and that's it. I think personally, had had the folks who might have been involved in this process <laughs> gone through the town plan and saw what was in the town plan. Okay, 
and been a little bit more involved in that part of the process, you could have probably gotten a little bit more detailed letter here. Okay, I, and it sounds to me like the intent of this yeah. is really to discourage things yeah. like a gas line and some other things coming through here, which I don't think, or I, like I said, I don't think it's ever yeah. well, going to happen. I mean, I think the biggest thing is this: is, is, a, is a group, it's a grassroots effort to encourage the legislature to be more proactive about climate change. And, and that's probably true, but that's, that's a town meeting versus yeah, an entire part. town right. taking right. the yeah. vote. And, the and the legislators from other uh, district, House districts and Senate districts all over the state are going to be getting They're probably all a getting similar this. letter because yeah. this wasn't just a Randolph initiative. This was a multi-town initiative right. around the state. Um, and I don't know. Uh, it read like a generic yeah. article that was shared by everybody. With, with the, the local. The name change, the local portion. With the second local portion being maybe more specific to Randall, or maybe not. I mean, it, these I things are so broad to, in general. You get these cookie cutter letters that mm -hmm. come from everybody, they don't carry a lot of weight. Yeah. No. This isn't going to carry as much weight as if they had said, in Randolph's town plan, we have all this verbiage already, we're concerned about this, and would like the state to continue to support us through mm -hmm. initiatives going through the legislature and going through state agencies and yada, yada, yada. That to me would carry a lot more weight coming in than the same letter that's coming out of multiple towns, yeah. pretty much verbatim. So, right, and and I, uh, I mean the second the second whereas clause when I said poking the bear earlier, it, it, it specifically hints that the state is making insufficient progress in its com com comprehensive energy plan. So this is just a way of saying that. In a floor vote, the town meeting, the people of Randolph said, "Get you know, get moving." Get the light out. Yeah, get moving. <laughs> and I, uh, just my take on this, because I said in all these meetings when all this stuff came down from above, so to speak, and I got to share with you that there's pieces of the town plan that are more in conflict, okay, in this energy section about where this stuff can be cited, that's going to actually restrict the ability to do this. Okay, because there's pieces in there that they wanted that said these sites shall not be visible from a state highway or a town road. Okay, so that right there is a restriction that, you know, what do you want here? I mean, if you're going to want renewable energy, yeah, well, but now you're going to say it's all going to be hidden, yeah. how are you going to accomplish that? And I will share this, this much with you. Mm, don't want to impact egg soils. Right. Don't want to... So, yeah. so well, as the a whole ridge piece of, line, the whole ridge line right. article. As a piece oh, of the puzzle, uh, just to give you a little clue, because I've asked all these questions, in order for Randolph to meet that goal, okay, we need 180 acres of solar. So that's what we need here total right now. Or a couple wind turbines. Huh? Oh, <laughs> or, yeah. So we'd have to, we have to accomplish this. this. We need 180 acres here, and that's based on the fact that you hit that 35% reduction, okay? Right. We currently only have, I believe the number was 18 acres total with projects that are pending to happen, which some of those didn't happen. So I don't know. Those are the ones that were pulled up from current CPGs that had either been approved or built. So we're a long ways away from this. Yeah. And when you yeah. start limiting, and this is why the Planning Commission did not go into detail with the maps for preferred siting because those maps were very controversial. Yeah, well this isn't unique to us. No, it's not. By any means. The, the, it's, oh, it's a statewide issue. The very same people that are call, calling for moving to, uh, a lot of the very same people, I don't want to paint it with a broad brush, but who are calling for us to move towards 100% renewable are the very same people that don't want to see windmills on ridge lines or solar panels in ag lands. So, Somewhere, there's not enough, somewhere we have to find. There's not enough rooftops yeah. and landfill spaces in Randolph yeah. right now to accommodate yeah. what's needed here. Yeah, so uh, I hear you, and it's a, it's frustrating. Yeah, I'm trying to get them to figure out how to put solar panels in wetlands. Yeah, put put a tall enough mm -hmm. post in there. You could get them buried. In I mean, the there'll be there'll be more solutions be going forward. But right now, I mean, you know, this is yeah. the conflict. Is is you know. The side wants, they want the renewables, but we don't want to cite it where you're seeing it. And that's very difficult to do, you know, in, this, in an area like ours where, you know, the, the topographical features are anywhere from, 
you know, 600 feet in the valley to 2,500 on the, on the mountaintops where the roads move up and down those contours. If you're in Florida, totally different story. All you gotta do is put up a wall. And I'll share with you from my travels from, from Vermont to Florida, the only other place that I saw major solar fields were in Homestead, Florida last week. <laughs> okay? I've driven up and down the coast probably 10 times in the last five years. And I've gone up through you know, the Smoky Mountain route, and I've gone down 95, and the only place you see solar after you leave here, okay, was the first big field I saw was in Homestead, Florida last week. And that's only because they didn't have a wall hiding it. <laughs> so maybe in Florida they're hiding it all with walls, but I don't think so. I don't think there's a lot of solar in Florida. There's not. I will tell you, there's <laughs> not. Know, I know there's yeah. not. There's I not. It seems counter. It's, 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 it seems well, crazy. It's, well, it, it's, it's, it's because certain economic interests have been yes, controlling exactly. the politics and... But uh, here you have the sunniest state in, Florida, in the Union. And they've been. Yeah. And we've got no solar. Well, and also, I will share with you my power bills have gone down in the last five years I've been there. It's, it's also this one of the states which is most vulnerable to rising seas. Oh, I, and. Don't get me started on that one. They're specifically <laughs> not doing anything about it. Right? I, haven't seen them, I haven't seen the seas rising in 40 years since I've been going there. Maybe it's going to happen, but I'm not so well, sure have yet. Have seen the numbers going up? I, 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 I read it. Up. I see it, but I'm not seeing it. The right. tides don't seem to change, and the mud flats aren't getting any any higher. We do have, I, I, could, I can share with the board that the, the total acreage that is probably available in the landfill for constructing solar is probably no, no greater than 20 acres, and that would include in one of the, the flood areas closest to the river, uh, the east part of the entrance of the landfill, we'd have to cut some, you know, maybe like three or four acres worth of woods to have 13 acres in one contiguous site, and then smaller uh, arrays on actual landfill mounds. So, so no more than 20 acres left in the landfill. Mm -hmm. That would be pushing it. Is there a reason we haven't looked at the landfill for more solar? Uh, we had a company come in three years ago. So they've established a small array. They they shrank the size of the proposed array to one and a, to one and a half acres, and they had initially proposed three. As they, uh, they 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 initially thought that they could put more and generate more revenue, but found that they couldn't. So they shrank it down to one and a half. Um, Is that Green Lantern? As Green Lantern. Yeah. So we've had um, the Greenmont Economic Development Corporation. We've informed them that if they know of any. Folks who want to put more solar rays in the, you know, they could send them our way and we could review it and share with the board. Mm -hmm. but Did they not put more because of the engineering study they had to do? Yeah, it was weight related. So it doesn't matter who puts more. No. Right? It's because they of the weight. can't, because they can't, too much pressure pushed out, too, would push out too much of the, yeah. the bad stuff that we don't want coming out. So, <coughs> mm -hmm. so they were going to have to do a study did you say? They did do a study oh, they already did that. and I thought that the guy told us when he came and talked about it that it showed they couldn't put any more than an acre on it Yeah. This is a, without uh, impacting with the, without the weight of it impacting the actual functioning of the mm -hmm. landfill. Probably about two years ago yeah. a year and a half ago yeah. so and so we thought we were going to get more out of them mm -hmm. they backed us off yeah. <clears throat> Was that sure. the old, old landfill or the new one? The new capped it has to be on the capped one and the line one. They won't allow them to put them on the other one. Yeah. There is a group that recently approached the town about a, a solar array field in East Randolph, but um, it went to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission, I believe, it has loosely reviewed the request. They do feel that it would meet the requirements to be posted or to be built, so it's still more of an inquiry than an actual. Offer that one actually that one actually meets the criteria for screening, which mm -hmm. was interesting that that one actually did meet it. It's a, it's a it's a meadow up off from 14 that has just a very very slight little spot that you can see the field that we looked at through the pictures last night, and that could easily be screened with some some cedar or evergreen type trees, so. The Planning Commission had no problem with it. It's going to come to the select board, I think, next month to do this blessing. And, and then it has to line up your long-term huh? long seats because the farmers aren't happy about it. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Which is part of what we get into is the loss of eggs. So. Yeah, so I mean these are the these are the shifts and this is the conflicts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's going to be the same. A lot of the same battle we ran into in Randolph Center. That one. And this one's only three acres, no, three or four acres. Perfect. So I mean, the planning commission says it's okay, but it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're just one little entity here. It doesn't drop in the bucket. Oh, yeah, no, that's, it is, and that's, that's why, yeah, that's that's why I'm saying it's like, okay, you get this point, you got to have 180 acres of panels here somewhere. Or something I don't see it happening with all the conflict. Because, you know, the question was how much can you put on the rooftops? Well, it's like 10% of that. And that's if you covered every rooftop. So these are all questions that we went through two years ago. Battle. Wind towers. Hmm? Put them right there, right now, center, right on top of the hill by BTC. <laughs> Carolyn will love it. Is that it in the manager's report? That uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it took longer than I. Oh, you're, no, you're we're we're hijacked. Hijacked. No, we, we hijacked. It's all my fault. It's all Tom's fault. Thank you. Nice way to start your first meeting. Tom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 40 minute danger. <laughs> well, that's a question I wanted to ask. So. Would you like to make a last motion then? Uh, a motion to adjourn. That would be good. Well, I would be more than happy to make that. Okay, second. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Has everyone heard that Vermont?